You are listening to From Embers, a weekly show on CFRC 101.9 FM about anarchist and anti-authoritarian ideas and practice. We are broadcasting from the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples on land that has come to be called Kingston, Ontario, Canada because of the thievery and brutality of the Canadian state and its empire-loving parents. From Embers is about fires, some real and some metaphorical. Fires started generations ago and tended to over the years. Little sparks all across this territory that we hope will grow, spread, and engulf the thieving state called Canada and the capitalist system that has plagued this land since the fur trade. Today on From Embers, I'll be speaking with an organizer of the Winter Fair, or Wild Hiver, a one-day distro fair and gathering centered around building capacity to deal with conflict and trauma within communities of struggle. For everyone out there listening, if you happen to be listening to this episode the day it came out, or shortly thereafter, uh, the Winter Fair is being held on Saturday, February 8th in Montreal, in Hochelaga Maisonneuve. And so if this conversation piques your interest, I encourage you to go and check it out. It starts at 11 a.m. and it's being held at 1611 Rue d'Orléans. And there are a number of sessions throughout the day, a communal dinner um, at 6 p.m. and a party afterwards somewhere nearby. And that's enough for me. I'll let today's guest tell you more about the Winter Fair. I'm one of the uh, organizers for the Winter Fair. I, this is the second year that I've, uh, like I've been doing this since the Winter Fair started. And so this is its second year and we're slowly like building momentum and reaching out further. I am also an anarchist. I'm engaged in a lot of anti-colonial struggles, um, as well as like struggles around nourishing resilient communities of struggle. And I can talk a little bit about what I mean by communities a bit later. Um, So I'll just leave it at that. I guess I'll start by asking, what is the Winter Fair? Okay, so um, the Winter Fair takes place on Ganigahaga territory in the place known as Jojage, and that's Montreal. Uh, the, fi- the fair is a day-long event and it's committed to really it's committed to building more resilient and more responsible communities of struggle um, the organizing crew that I belong to engages with a definition of community and more particularly a community of struggle as something that means groups of people who share material and emotional resources as well as share and taking risks so I think it's just really important to situate how we're relating to community because that can often be used like in many different ways. It can be a term that's watered down. So we're, we're using it in a very particular way. Um, the intention of the Winter Fair is really to create a space for reflection and sharing based on the theme selected for that year. So it's our second year and we plan to commit to continue so far. Um, in our first year, we looked at the theme of uh, life without cops. And this was a really rich theme because it also became a day about understanding our individual and collective capacities to deal with issues that at this time, moment in time in in society are really relegated to cops in the legal system, such as like everything from domestic abuse, mental health, violence, um, like for even for people who like don't have um, shelter or housing, like th- this is all relegated to to a legal to the legal system, and what that does is it really takes our capacity 
a way to address it. And then we can become super reliant on these structures of control and domination. So that is kind of where that our, the first year took us into reflecting on these things. And we asked questions such as like, what can we do in these situations instead of calling the cops? What current relationships and skill sets do we, do we lack to actually kick cops out of our neighborhoods? And this also includes addressing the ways that cops in, intentionally and disproportionately harass and attack black and indigenous people and in general people of color as well as sex workers and trans people so this was a day of like really trying to reckon with also like what kind of skills do we actually need to do this and you know it was really just the kind of like scratching at the surface um so like a reoccurring theme that came up throughout our day in, in our first year was the fact that much of this capacity hinges upon the strength of existing relationships. So the first winter fair ended on a panel about how we deal with interpersonal conflict as a way to build capacity, capacity to mitigate harms that result from the intense repression anarchists and anti-authoritarian radicals face from their political choices and work. And, and so that this is the story that became the basis to spark the inspiration for the section, the second annual winter fair, which is happening this February 8th, 2020. And, and this theme looks at how we can deal more, um, more intentionally with conflict in our communities. Um, we see this as a continuation of an anarchist tradition that combines the struggle against all forms of domination and exploit, exploit, exploitation with practices of healing and care. And that includes the heart, mind, and body and, and trying to nourish that at the individual and collective level. So this is what has been inspired from the conversations that came out of the first year and our reflections on them. And just kind of where we wanted to take it because there seems to be you know, the reality is that conflict and trauma affect a lot of people's lives. And so what does that mean to come together and talk about ways that we can um, address them in in ways that like don't cause further harm so that maybe we can move through those conflicts in a way that doesn't devastate our relationships. I think also, you know, the winter fair and our theme this year is uh, hoping to nourish, you know, the anti-authoritarian fighting spirit spirit and many of its uh, manifestations that it takes. And this means finding ways to heal our individual and collective wounds we have, have like inflicted on each other because we mess up sometimes and sometimes we mess up in complex ways. And, and there's also the stress and trauma many people accumulate as a result of their struggles against the settler colonial Canadian state and the various corporate entities that prop up and per perpetuate its existence. Um, so, you know, the, the accumulation of this stress and trauma is obviously not going to impact everybody in the same way because of the way that race, gender, sexuality, socioeconomic status, and so on overlap and play out differently in people's lives. So we just kind of offer this day as a point of encounter so that people can run with it, take these skills and reflections, build on the skills and reflections they have already already have and put it into practice um, that best suits their needs. So that's kind of what the Winter Fair is and trying to be this year. Do you want to share some of the workshops and or conversations that you're excited about um, totally. in this year's Winter Fair or that you're hoping will take place? <laughs> I'm actually excited about the entire day. Um, we've made an explicit choice to not crowd the day with workshops and discussions. So instead we have chosen to program four throughout this day, as well as include a, a distro and, and we'll end the day with a communal dinner. So I can, I'm, I'm just going to actually talk about really like generally about the four things that are happening uh, in addition to the distro, uh, the distro fair that will be happening also all day. But uh, so we have um, a practice based exploration of uh, a restorative circle. And this is, a method for mediating uh, conflict in a collective and consensual way. We also have a um, self-identified BIPOC-only discussion on navigating race-based conflict and dynamics in organizing circles. Um, we also are going to have a panel discussing, um, well, it's going to be a panel discussion dealing with the effects of trauma in interpersonal and political conflicts. 
And also we'll have a somatic workshop that is going to look at the ways to regulate our nervous systems so as to mitigate the impact that conflict and trauma have on our bodies. Bodies includes mind and emotions and thinking about more uh, intentionally about how our nervous systems respond in moments of conflict and what we can do to be aware of how we're responding as a result of these activations and also understand our boundaries so we can come back to what's coming up in a, in a more um, present and generative way. And like I said, we're going to wrap up the day with a communal dinner and we have an after, uh, like an after party planned at a neighborhood bar. Uh, in terms of like things that I'm personally, what I'm excited about or hope for, uh, first and foremost, you know, I really just hope people who come to the Winter Fair walk away with tiny kernels of truth or insight that will support them in their everyday lives and perhaps organizing context. Um, and then on the on as one of the organizers, I hope that the day's attendees will uh, have opportunities and conversation to reflect upon how conflict and trauma play out in their own lives or in the lives of their loved ones, be they friends, comrades, lovers, or all, all of them mixed together. Like, I hope the event inspires people to talk about the ways trauma impacts or limits how one is able to navigate conflict, be it interpersonal, political, or a mix of both. I want the Winter Fair to encourage conversations about how to build how to build real and functional networks of support you know to collectively address conflict in community as well as how such networks can also support the expansion of people's capacity to deal with the hard shit uh, i know this isn't always possible because not everyone has the access to the same resources so this is why many of us on the organizing committee see the question of conflict as both an individual and collective responsibility. So, you know, we want communities to retain their resiliency, not lose it, even when inevitable and various conflicts arrive. So, you know, I hope that people might be inspired to think about the ways conflict, trauma, and all the emotions that live in our bodies and like and live in our bodies and come out in our bodily responses to certain kinds of emotional activation and i want people to think about how their bodies are are like such a big part of the ways that we respond to conflict um that's been you know a really important thing for many of us on on like these these have been discussions that many of us have been having in the last year is like coming to an awareness about how much how much of a role our bodies play in our capacity to respond to conflict. Um, and that also like that as a result of like trauma and mental health, it makes it hard sometimes to communicate in ways that address um, to address and move through conflict. So how do we people find ways to stay present in our bodies, stay tuned to emotions coming up in them so that we can actually address uh, the things, people and events that hurt us. So these are questions that we're asking also as a, an organizing crew and also hopefully, you know, people will be inspired to, to have similar or um, conversations along these themes because, you know, this is both a, an individual and collective task. And I guess lastly, <clears throat> excuse me, I want people to think about, um, I want people to think about the fact that conflict mediation isn't always about making it better or right because it can also be about creating a shared space to grieve relationships that might have been lost as a result of conflict. So yeah, that's some of my um, hopes and things that I'm excited about part, maybe having conversations with people about during the day.
Who do you see this event as being for or who are you hoping will participate? Well, it's a public event, so anyone can show up. I think that we framed it in such a way that it's directed at people engaged in communities of struggle. Um, in, in, and though, you know, someone walks in who just saw the poster and like, that's really cool too. Maybe they'll also take a thing or two away from them, but we're, we've geared this uh, day to address uh, the needs and questions and themes that have come up for people who are engaged in political struggle in a serious way and have formed relationships as a result of that and are asking questions about how to sustain these commitments to political struggle while nourishing healthy relationships. Are there specific things that you learned from organizing or just being involved with the Winter Fair last year that people are trying to put into practice or change for this year's Winter Fair? So like I mentioned earlier, we we base the uh, event on themes, and so they're different each year. So the first and second year are going to feel different in tone and content. And like I said, like, I think we realized last year, like, we're, we're really just scratching the surface of the theme. And perhaps we can return back to them in future themes. Who knows? But they're all, that's always a possibility. Um, and this year, we, we, we understand that we're doing the same, and, and that's okay. One thing that we did this year um, that was different is that we secured an event space right away. And that gave it kind of a more concrete, secure, like, okay, this is happening. We're not scrambling around for a space at the last minute. Now we have a lot of time to uh, focus on the content and framing of this uh, year's event. Um, Because last year we lost the initial space at the last minute. (laughs) And that caused a lot of scrambling around, but, you know, we persevered. We were a resilient crew of organizers. And, and also thanks to many people in the broader uh, community in Oshlaga, we were able to lock down a place just in time. So yeah, that's, that's a bit of a difference, I think, from this year, from last, from last year to this year.
You're listening to From Embers on CFRC 101.9 FM, broadcasting from the basement of Carruthers Hall in Kingston, Ontario. Or you can find us online wherever you get your podcasts. In just a moment, we'll return to my interview with an organizer of the Winter Fair in Montreal. Uh, But first, here's a jingle from another podcast on the Channel Zero Anarchist Podcast Network. In the eyes of the government, we are the enemy. In a world where there is no government, anarchy rules. This summer, get ready for the most action-packed podcast. We continue fighting because we hate all authority and love freedom, which cannot be given, but must be taken. Such scenes as, this is not a dialogue, a crime called freedom, parties over, and many, many more. For more text and audio material of interest to anarchists, check out Resonance Audio Distro. Dot org. Do you want to uh, speak a bit about your context in Montreal and in Oshlega for listeners who might not be familiar with those places? Sure. Okay, so Montreal has a robust tradition of anarchist organizing. For example, the Montreal Anarchist Book Fair is one of the biggest on the continent and happens every May. And the scale of that book fair is really reflective of the level of anarchist activity in the city, which is quite high for North American standards. Uh, I moved to Oshlaga recently, and so I'm still getting to know the context here. Uh, There are a lot of people who are anarchists and anarchist adjacent. It's uh, a neighborhood with the longest standing social space in the city, which was the La de Ferl and now is La Chop. Chop. Um, And there's a lot of radical organizing history here. And it's just something that I'm getting to know now. What kind of uh, relationship, if any, does the Winter Fair have to the Montreal Book Fair or like I don't know if there were things that motivated people to organize a smaller winter event. Um, Yeah, for sure. So I think that, so there's no um, relationship between the Montreal book fair uh, and this one, except um, that obviously like we support the Montreal book fair and have been inspired by the hard work that folks have done uh, throughout the years that the Montreal book fair has occurred. Also, uh, also the Montreal Book Fair, Anarchist Book Fair happens in the spring. And it seems like a lot of Montreal anarchist festivities happen in the spring. And the winter can be so long and isolating sometimes. So we wanted to offer something festive and reflect and like something where people can come together, an event where people can come together and reflect and, and nourish each other's spirits in the dead of winter. That's our motivation for having it in February. What are some of the challenges of organizing this kind of gathering that you've experienced? I think some of the challenges of organizing this kind of gathering is the fact that things come up at the last minute. So, you know, speakers or panelists can cancel. People doing food might have stuff come up and can no longer, um, like, take on being the point person for organizing the food for that day. Like I said before, the space um, that we thought we had might no longer be available. So these things have been and will continue to be challenges in the sense that we have to scramble and and fill the gaps or find another person. Uh, But I think I mentioned this earlier, like uh, the organizing crew for this event is really solid. Like uh, everyone is so brilliant and motivated and amazing. And I feel so capable of anything working with them and I'm willing to take um, risks in terms of like challenging thematic content and I think that's a lot to do with that the fact that everyone is really committed to this project so yes there are challenges and perhaps there's challenges that come up that I cannot anticipate now but I'm I'm confident in the capacity of the organizing crew to to address them and move through them um maybe that in part answers my next question but how do you feel the organizing has been going okay so it's been like 
I think organizing an event is a lot of work. There's a lot of moving parts that at some point all come together. Uh, and the challenge is, you know, moving through the different parts and checking off your boxes and making sure that the details are, you know, being taken care of or making sure that tasks are being followed through on. And this year I felt like, you know, the crew, while, you know, having to do this work and, you know, having to make sure that we're like, you know, following all the different moving parts and following up on tasks and making sure the deep details are, are covered. Uh, we've been able to flow from one task to another. And, you know, as we get closer to the date, we're working a lot more and there's more details that come up that need to be figured out. And we're coordinating other people's schedules and uh, speakers needs and, and making sure that, you know, um, you know, the people who are speaking or leading a workshop, they, they're like what they are requesting will be provided. So, you know, those are all things that come up in the, in the moment too. Like the day of, there's always um, things that come up. But um, in in overall, um, the way that we've been relating to this has been so intentional and and with such a commitment that it's been such a, it's been a really enjoyable experience. No manuals, no manuscripts, no man-made arrogance, no luxurious terraces, impervious carelessness, ecocidal damages, just a great awakening from the heat of mystical foggy mist, collective embarrassment for acts of war by few, made to feel powerless like, what the hell am I to do? See if I were you, I'd get the F out and dodge, camouflage the face of tide for a lost cause, pause, mind scars preventing masses from acting massive, floating on the rivers cause they built their own rafts, uh, though they're highly clever, they face unnatural disasters, the current strong but they paddling it on I know this turbulent sun challenge won't subside I trust the rivers but still I'm my own god And I lust for the futures that be so bright Worst case we'll be sailing in the wind You win? Bruce Lee taught me to be the water For to the island we promise to fight harder Bruce Lee taught me to be the water For to the island we promise to fight Bruce Lee taught me to be the water For to the island we promise to fight harder Bruce Lee taught me to be the water For to the island we fight, fight, fight Water's the recipe Lifeline energy, fought for, died for What's gotten into these corporate entities that disagree Physically threatening our rights to be There's gotta be more to life than this Companies claim the lake, say they got the D Tap it, then they charge a fee 36,000 in Detroit, victims of their greed Muhammad will forever speak The blame gets deflected, rage misdirected They pay corrupt leaders, pass the environmental protection Inspection, super fine print grin. Special ingredients in a war that ain't leading it's hardcore, cause dollars gotta be made CEOs need gas money for their jet planes But life is just a river, man We ride it like it ain't no thing Feeling secure through the positivity we bring Bruce Lee taught me to be the water For to the island we promise to fight harder Bruce Lee taught me to be the water For to the island we promise to fight Bruce Lee taught me to be the water For to the island we promise to fight harder Bruce Lee taught me to be the water For to the island we fight I guess in the description or in a description of the event that I read, um, people had described focusing on the many ways to mitigate harms that accompany conflict, both from the state and from within our interpersonal relationships. I'm curious, uh, what are some of the differences that you see in how how anarchists or other people in our communities of struggle use to deal with conflict with the state versus conflict interpersonally? Or um, 
Yeah. And what things do you think we carry into each of those conflicts from either direction? That's so big, but it's a good question. (laughs) It's a lot, but like, I don't even think I'm going to be able to answer this adequately, but I will try my best. Okay. Um, So first of all, I'm going to speak for myself on this first part, because um, I think amongst the people organizing, uh, there are various iterations on, on how one would relate to this. So for my, so I don't want to generalize too much, but for myself, when it comes to the state, I, I understand myself to be in direct confrontation with it. So my life has been oriented in such a way to pursue its overall destruction and the control and regulation that it has on our everyday lives. And I do this by imagining ways to weaken the political, economic, institutional apparatuses that, you know, sustain it. Um, So like, you know, in short, my conflict with the state is violent. But this is the exact opposite for interpersonal conflict, I think, um, I believe, and I, and I want to practice. Be, I want to steer away from harmful ways of relating to each other because it's not a zero-sum game, even though sometimes we default to really punitive and uh, hurtful ways of relating to conflict in our, our personal lives. And there's still going to be hurt from conflict, but I'd like to see like that hurt unfold in a context where individuals don't feel um, isolated by their shame, they don't feel excluded, or they don't um, experience absolute devastation in their relationship by a conflict because uh, they both know how, because they have the skills to navigate conflict in a manner that is more nourishing. And also they have worked on building networks of support to hold them as they go through the conflict, to hold their emotions, to hold them and support them as they experience like the hurt that comes up from when conflict arises. And, and, and in, by holding each other, we also create space to be more present with what's coming up. And then we have more of an opportunity to reflect on that. So, And those are the differences, I think. And I think that to be real, like we, like we as people engaged uh, in struggle and I, and I mean that as like, I can refer to the people I'm saying this in relation to we as the people I relate to as an anarchist in my context of struggle. Like, I think we carry a lot of into our interpersonal lives simply because we live in a society premised on domination, control and exploitation. So, you know, just because we say we're anarchists doesn't mean that this political label simply removes all the negative and harmful ways we've learned and carried with us from this world I've described, you know, it takes intention, reflection and willingness to act and be different. And that counts most when it, when, you know, we're in a moment of conflict, you know, not just when I'm sitting here and telling you about what I think it should be. And that's, that's hard work. I think it takes patience and I think it takes a willingness to make a mistake to, to own that and then to move on and try to do better, try to nourish um, those, those spaces um, or those, those wounds um, so that we can heal. There's also like the fact that, you know, stress and trauma come from direct confrontation with the state and the repression that is ever present that weighs on many people. It accumulates and that plays out in our personal dynamics and organizing situations. So, you know, three words that we use to frame uh, this event this year is share, fight, care. So we want to share our resources. We want to share our uh, in support of each other. We want to fight in a way that's fierce, that is committed, that is strategic. And then we want to also care for each other. We want to, you know, heal each other's wounds. We want to attend to um, the, the, you know, the, the places and spaces that we're still hurting and we want to care for our relationships that we're building in, in order so we can fight. And so in order so with that, we can, in order that we can share, you know, so that's, that's the kind of way that we frame this. Also in the call out that I read, uh, people wrote, we seek to share this day in good faith dialogue across other anti-authoritarian tendencies that sometimes intersect anti-state mm-hmm. communist decolonial, abolitionist, autonomous, anti-racist, queer, feminist, and many others. Um, Yeah, I'm curious, like, why did people feel it was important to explicitly invite participation across a wide range of anti-authoritarian tendencies or movements? Um, As organizers, I think 
we wanted to be upfront about the politics and traditions that were uh, important to us and inspiring us. So naming the Winter Fair as an anarchist event was important. And at the same time, we're saying, you know, we're not interested in drawing hard sectarian lines and that we want the Winter Fair to be a place where discussions can happen across different anti-authoritarian traditions. Um, and, and this is like in the broader umbrella of anti-authoritarian traditions. So like that's this is important because we're not interested in, in having these kind of conversations with liberals or state communists. Um, and so this broader umbrella in our own context reflects the various tendencies that exist in the city and the neighborhood. So naming it in the call out is, is a move to be explicit with whom we want to have those conversations with, while it also encouraging a cross pollination of ideas across tendencies around the question of uh, conflict and trauma and interpersonal relationships. And more on a personal note, um, from my own personal experiences, what I bring to this question as a ref- like as a reflection and a part of like how I relate to that statement in the call out is that in my experiences in uh, organizing uh, in context of land defense and water protection, I've often met and worked alongside people who uh, may not call themselves anarchists, but have very similar analysis, but from their own political and cultural uh, background. So, you know, I've shared this, like these discussions around um, the state and extractive industries and private properties. Like I'm, we're arriving at similar points of agreement, but the traditions that we have an analysis that we arrive at it from are not similar. So I think points of connections are the possibilities for people um to connect around and situating the winter fair as an outward facing event to connect with people across different anti-authoritarian tendencies is also about, you know, it's about finding these points of connections around conflict and trauma that may bolster our resiliency and networks of support. So yeah, it's both been like a, a personal journey and a political journey that each of us have kind of um, arrived at. And I'm, I'm just sharing that small story as like how I've come to understand uh, the reasons why we included that in the call Do you have any advice for people thinking about organizing a book fair or gathering where they live? Yeah, I offer this as like, this is obviously, I offer this as the, with the caveat that the, there is no perfect formula formula. There's no perfect formula to do this. Um, so there, these are just some of the components that have worked for us in this moment. I would say, you know, be creative, take chances, uh, be open to getting it wrong, organize with people who are serious, start way earlier than you think, promote your event based on how open you want to be with it, reach out to people beyond your um reach out to people beyond your immediate community and see if they share similar interests and might be able to contrib- contribute so like i said like these are some things that work for us but it's not a perfect formula Trying to fit the circle cause I don't know how to act 
shit Half of y'all was steady insecure Don't try to backflip Just because the seasoning and flow's already active Only four years Fantastic Young veteran New classic Nah, I knocked the walls off Fuck the whole key We gon' hinge the whole door off I'm still AD Never forget it It's life after death Roll the credits I say my feelings Credit my mega, take a trip to see Jamaica Molly spirit with the vapor back to Zion, that's the nature Africa, the new America, I hope I run this permanent And this I put my pen in it, got my land and my permit with it Bone on my bone, flesh off my flesh Weightness in me, you can't make me feel less Let's hold, I'm not impressed Best mode, got my afro like an empress Wait state I'm in, in all states I'm in I might find a form in my melanin Wait state I'm in, in all states I'm in I might find a form in my melanin Wait state I'm in, in all states I'm in I might find a form in my melanin Wait state I'm in, in all states I'm in I might find a form in my melanin What they started and we made it Wait state I'm in In all states I'm in I might find a form In my melanin Wait state I'm in In all states I'm in I might find a form In my melanin Wait state I'm in In all states I'm in I might find a form In my melanin Wait state I'm in In all states I'm in I might find a form In my melanin I guess from my experience of participating in the Montreal Book Fair and like thinking about how how venues like that sometimes gets get used as like a quote unquote public space or a space for people to f- have their conflicts or experiences sort of seen and validated within their communities, um, often in ways that maybe I think are destructive, but also I, I kind of understand why people do that or something. Um, and then also in terms of like, uh, I know people have had different um, different positions, I guess, on like what kinds of responsibility organizers of again thinking of the Montreal Book Fair specifically have in terms of like um, allowing people who have hurt or abused people um, or inflicted different kinds of trauma or violence on others to attend. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm just curious about if that is a thing that y'all have talked about in your organizing or have planned for or are anticipating in some way? I know it's kind of a big and vague question, but yeah, I don't know if that's a thing that people have thought about or have a plan for. Okay. So I think that, um, first of all, I think that it's hard. I don't think we can necessarily be compared to the Montreal Book Fair because it's, it's quite different in its breadth and approach. It's much more general. It's a lot bigger. It runs for two days and it's run for many, many years. Um, so that, that seems like a difficult comparison because we're not, it's not just because we're in a second year, but this has also been kind of like, this is something that we do based in a neighborhood and uh, like we have themes and obviously we're reaching out to people, but it's also an event that's situated in a neighborhood. So like, I think the tone is a lot different um, than the Montreal book fair and, and it's been, you know, created to offer us like a more intimate experience in winter. So that's one of those things, but I'm not like, that's just to set up like my answer. 
Um, I think that that's totally real. Uh, people taking the opportunity for conflict uh, to use public spaces to like validate their conflicts. I think that this year we have talked about the ways that this event is not about exploring particular conflicts that are playing out in our community, but rather creating a space for people to hear about constructive, generative, nourishing and healing ways to deal with conflict and then to take um, that and figure out how they want to run with it and best apply it in their own context, be that um, their personal and or organizing context. And then lastly, around the um, question of abuse and abusers, this is actually a recent conversation we had about having the um, after party in a neighborhood bar. We were worried uh, about, you know, people showing up who were homophobic, transphobic, um, and were just really not down with uh, queers and gays being in a neighborhood bar. And so we're taking precautions to be able to intervene should those, um, well, you know, we're trying to take precautions by having these conversations now. Um, to be able to respond to and intervene should those um, occasions arise. That makes me also want to ask about like the dynamics of, actually, I guess I should have asked if the event would be like all in English. And then I guess also the dynamics of having an event for a maybe largely Anglophone community. I don't know how true that is. I don't know. Is this a question? <laughs> I'm spiraling. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, the event is, so for example, um, what the event on restorative circles is going to be in French with, uh, transla- with translation available to English. And the somatic workshop is going to be in French with translation available to English. Um, and, and then the panel discussion is going to be in English. And I am not completely uh, sure about the discussion on navigating uh, uh, race dynamics in organizing spaces, but I do believe that it will be in English with the uh, possibility to have translation to French. Um, and the day is going, like the people that are going to be in the space are going to be a mix of Francophone, um, Anglophones, and probably some Allophones. Also, the fact that it's in Oshalaga, which is a uh, historically a francophone um, neighborhood so like we'll probably see a lot of people come out from the neighborhood as well so yeah I think the question of language is a particular thing to Montreal and it is interesting in the way that it comes up in and around organizing and we do have to consider it And we do have to figure out ways to address the fact that people are attending who don't necessarily speak French or who don't necessarily speak English and just try to do our best to uh, accommodate that fact. Yeah. And like the distro fair, for example, is going to be both in French and English like that. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much for being down for this. Yeah. Is it's on the 8th? Yeah. It's Saturday the 8th. You know, this was a real pleasure to speak with you about that. And thank you for, you know, giving me a platform to talk about this important project. And I hope that um, people who are listening are inspired uh, by our discussion to come out and come to the Winter Fair. Thanks for listening. As always, you can get in touch with us by emailing from embers at riseup.net. We'd love to hear from you. See you at the Winter Fair.